Hello dear students. In this lecture we will discuss about the estimation of another ECG parameter that is RR interval. So let's see how we can estimate this RR interval. The estimation of this RR interval is important mainly to measure the heart rate and this cannot be overemphasized in cardiological signal analysis and prediction of all arrhythmias of the heart is done on the basis of this parameter. Therefore, it is needed to develop an accurate method for its measurement. The heart rate may be computed in beats per minute that is BPM as 60 divided by the average RR interval in seconds. What are the different methods to estimate RR interval? So we have the finite first difference method. This method is used in the Nygaard's and Halting online system. A high signal to noise ratio must be ensured to apply this method and it is implemented in two stages. Stage 1 requires the elimination of interfering signals, mainly baseline drift. And then stage 2 involves detection and identification of the R wave following the stage 1 operation. Now, stage 1, as I mentioned, in the Nygaard's and Halting system, the digitized signal readings are taken in pairs and the average of each pair is calculated. This averaging process reduces the effects of means fluctuation and also of voltage spikes from the chest muscle activity. The signal is then pre-processed by passing through the band pass filter like we have used in the detection of QRS complexes which was the cascade of low pass and high pass filter and this is to estimate not only the baseline wander but also other interfering signals due to muscle noise, power line interference and T wave signals. Now stage 2 it looks for the R peaks as we know that in ECG cycle or a cardiac cycle R is defined as a peak. So we look for the R peaks by a first difference method. A positive first difference occurs with a rising slope and a negative first difference with a falling slope while a zero difference indicates a level section of the trace of an ECG. The steeper the slope, the larger will be the value of first difference. The R wave spike detection looks for a change from positive to negative first difference and then checks whether the size of the change is larger than a particular threshold. If both these conditions are satisfied, then the point at which the change has occurred is marked as an R peak. Once the R peaks are identified, heart rate can also be determined by knowing the period between the successive R peaks. For example, if the peaks are detected, at intervals of 51 and 136 in an ECG signal which is sampled 100 times per second then we can calculate the heart rate in beats per minute as 100 divided by the difference of 136 and 51 into 60 which will give us 74 beats per minute. So this method is simple to implement and 
it has the limitation that the piecewise linear approximation assumption does not work well when either the waveform changes too abruptly or they does not conform to a linear path also it assumes that the signal to noise ratio is high so we have another method that is match filter the analog case a match filter does not only reduces the interference but importantly it maximizes the peak signal at the same time so how we design the match filter a general representation of a match filter as you can see in the figure the input signal rt that is the sum of we can say a signal component st and a noise component nt so we are passing that to match filter and we are getting output as r not t which is again the we can say filtered signal corresponding to signal and noise component now the signal wave shape in this case is assumed to be known and it is also assumed absolutely to be time limited within the time interval of 0 t and otherwise it is zero the power spectral density of this additive input noise is also known now the objective is to determine the filter characteristics such that the instantaneous output signal power with respect to the average output noise power is maximized at a sampling instant let's suppose t not that is we have to design a filter hf whose impulse response ht is such that you can say snr output will be s not square at a particular time instant sampling instant t not divided by the energy of we can say no n noise output so it is given by e that is average n not square t it should be maximum in the time domain the impulse response of a mass filter for the white noise is simply the known signal wave shape that is played back and shifted by an amount t not or it is a mirror reflection of the single component signal component of the input about the time t not therefore a match filter derives its name from the fact that it is matched to the signal component of the input now since the wave shape of the qrs complex is known it follows that the impulse response of the match filter is a time reversed version of the qrs complex apart from a possible change in amplitude scale and time origin now when the ecg waveform appears at the point to the match filter a large response is produced which attains a maximum at the instant that corresponds to the r wave as it is the most dominating peak of the qrs complex and also is matched to it further the output exceeding some predetermined threshold are used to indicate the presence of the qrs complex and the peak value as a occurrence of r wave the duration between the successive peaks of the output of the match filter therefore they can be taken as the rr interval now we have a match filter as a discrete case we have already discussed now the analog case that was in t domain similarly now we have discrete case that is n domain so for that consider the input to the digital filter be rn and the output be r not n so we are passing this rn which is again the sum of the signal component of the input that is sn and vn which is the noise component of the input 
and it will produce output R not n, which is again represented as S not plus we can say V not, which is the signal and noise output constituent respectively. So as we mentioned in the analog case, in digital case also or discrete case also, the impulse response of a digital match filter HN when the input noise is white Gaussian with zero mean is given by the equation H. This is optimal or for digital filter we are keeping that in N domain is equal to CS in brackets capital N minus N where C is a constant which is a real constant and capital N it represents the point in time at which we wish to maximize the signal to noise ratio that is S and R. Now we'll see one example for this mash filter design. Considering an ECG signal you can see we have considered one original signal ECG signal it has the drift in baseline of the waveform as you can see it is not exactly starting from zero. So the second cycle is chosen as one ECG waveform that is to be matched as you can see in figure B. So this one ECG waveform we, has, we have taken and mainly it is the second cycle we have taken which we want to be matched. Now the impulse response of the match filter which we, how we can choose in this case it is as the mirror image of the chosen image of this uh, ECG that is non-causal form you can see in figure C. So what we have done we have taken the mirror image in non-causal case. Now we want that to be shifted means we want in causal case. So the causal version which is delayed by 250 samples of the match filter is shown in figure D. So the output of the match filter that is the convolution of the original sequence and the impulse response of the match filter is shown in figure E. You can see this is the convolved output with match filter. So from this the RR intervals are to be determined. As you can see in this figure in figure E the RR intervals as you can see they are at 273 260 and 271 respectively. Obtained by the process of match filtering, they are found to be in close agreement with the actual measured values 270, 260 and 270 respectively. So these are the different values. Now we have another parameter that is ST segment. So how we can estimate the ST segment inclination. The ST segment is a measure of the duration of ECG just after the depolarization of the ventricles that is the QRS complex and just before the repolarization of the ventricles that is the T wave. The changes in the ST segment of the ECG are indicative of a deficiency in the blood supply to the heart muscle. Normally, this ST segment is isoelectric, but ST segment elevation usually less than 0.2 millivolt is often noted in precordial leads in normal patients. Elevated or depressed ST segment is indicative of myocardial ischemia. Therefore, there is a need to measure elevation or depression that are the ST levels of ECG segment accurately. An isoelectric line as a reference is required. The degree of ST displacement is measured with respect to either the PR or TP segments. The degree of ST displacement is expressed in millivolts. Now let's look at the ST segment analyzer. This is uh, we are considering this ECG waveform. So you can see this uh, ST 
area, so when we have taken one isoelectric line, the analysis assumed that the QRS complex and R wave have been already determined with the previous methods, whatever we have studied up till now, as these measurements are basic to the estimation of the ST segment parameters. For an accurate estimation of the ST segment, one needs to define the J point. So you can see here the J point. This is the J point. The J point corresponds to the change in the slope. You can see here positive to negative slope is going on. That initiates the transition from S wave to ST segment or simply stated, it is the first inflection point after the S point or it may be the S point itself. So the S point is located as the first inflection point after the R wave. Next, we define the T point, which represents the onset of T wave. So this is S point. Then we have J point, T point. It is found by first locating the T wave P, which is the largest absolute value measured from the isoelectric line between J plus 80 millisecond and R plus 400 millisecond. The isoelectric line of the ECG waveform is located by searching between the P and Q waves for a 30 millisecond interval of near zero slope. Next, the T point is located by searching for a 35 millisecond period on the R side of the T wave that has values within the range of one sample unit of each other. If it is not possible to locate the point by using the above criteria, then it can be assumed to be at J plus 120 millisecond. So the distance measured from the J point to the T point converted into seconds represents the duration of the ST segment. For ST segments, the surge has to be carried in the region between J plus 20 millisecond and the T point through a windowed surge method. The point of maximal depression or elevation in the window is then identified. Then the ST segment levels measured as we can say they are expressed as the absolute change with respect to the isoelectric line. The ST area, as you can see here, the shaded area is calculated by summing all sample values between the J and T points after subtracting the isoelectric line value from each point. The ST slope is defined as the amplitude difference between the ST segment point and the T point divided by the corresponding time interval and accordingly it is calculated. Now we have another uh, topic because some parameters are there which require multi-scale analysis. So we'll discuss next the use of multi-scale analysis for parameters estimation of the ECG waveform. So far we have discussed uh, mainly about the estimation and detection of QRS complexes, RR interval, ST segments, but no mention has so far been made of the detection and estimation of the P and T waves. It is not because they are not important. Indeed, they are important features of an ECG and they do have vital diagnostic information. For instance, SA that is a sinus, you can say sinus node or we are calling it as when uh, atrial repolarization and repolarization is going on. So SA log is recognized by the absence of an expected P wave. Symmetrical T waves upright or inverted are the characteristics of electrocardiographic ischemia. Now, what is the problem with, uh, with regard to measurement of P and T waves? The amplitudes of these 
vary over a wide range. Sometimes even their amplitudes become comparable to that of noise present in the signal. So also a detailed analysis of the P wave may be unreliable because of the artifacts encountered in patient monitoring. So the wavelet transform and the use of multi-scale analysis can be deployed for determining the various morphologies of these kind of morphologies in the ECG waveform. But all the morphologies cannot be resolved at these scales since the duration of P, QRS and T waves are not integer multiples. And if we talk about Sivna, Rayana and Reddy, they suggested the use of fractional octave scales for this purpose. They have shown with real ECG data that even when the signal to noise ratio are poor, their technique can accurately estimate the duration of P, QRS and D complexes as well as other morphologies. So this was all in this lecture and we have taken the images and we have covered this topic from the book by DC Reddy, Biomedical Signal Processing Principles and Techniques by Tata Megra Hill. So thank you very much.